All right, what's up, Warrior Nation? Welcome back into One Take, the official podcast of the One New Zealand Warriors. Joined, as always, by Ben Surley of Surley Talk Sports. How are you, my man? Yeah, good. I feel like we say it every week, but... Another, another week, another, another win. win. Another win at Mount Smart, <laughs> sold out crowd. How yeah. good is it? Nah, the sold out crowd was pretty special. We'll get to all of that, um, but we are joined today. It's very exciting, very special. I'm going to give his title a crack. We were just um, giving a bit of stick about it. The Warriors General Manager of Recruitment, Development and Pathways. Um, fresh off a very exciting uh, Pacific Aotearoa Pathways announcement. We'll get to all of that, but Andrew, Cappy McFadden, how are you, mate? Welcome. Welcome. Thank you. Thanks, guys. <laughs> Appreciate you actually getting my title out. I can't even remember. <laughs> yeah. awesome. you've, um, you've obviously had a, a journey at this club, mate, and we're very excited to kind of work through it. Benny's got a shit ton of fan questions for you. Um, but we'd like to start this with just a little bit of a check-in, mate, and ask how are you. So how are you, Cap? I'm fantastic, actually. I <laughs> think we're all enjoying the – you know, the way the team's playing at the moment. And, um, you know, it's there's nothing like getting a sold-out, you know, stadium and that momentum in, in Auckland. You know, it's, um, you know, the team's going good and you can feel the energy. Yeah. Well, your your role, obviously, you've you've had a, a, a hell of a career playing, then into coaching, and now you're into this um, the very interesting world of recruitment and development. Talk us kind of through how that sort of came about a little bit, Cap, and then we'll kind of get into the day-to-day stuff. But is that something that you always – had a passion for the, the the development and pathways side of football. Um, look, I, it's sort of come out of the blue, to be honest with you. But I, I had been going down that that road of thinking in terms of, you know, I'd been coaching for the last eighteen years. I played before that. Um, I felt like I needed a bit of a change, mm. um, and but I always thought, well, what would that be? Um, and you know, I wanted to stay in rugby league if I could because that's my passion. Um, and this this sort of job came up. Um, out of the blue and it was the timing was right and um, you know the certainly the job excited me I, I think the I guess the the blank canvas mm. of, of particularly the pathways and, and what's happened with the Warriors over the last you know pr- previous three seasons with COVID and that like to come in here and be able to just set something something up from the start was yeah and and also knowing you know the opportunity here as well. Yeah. Like you know, I knew the lay of the land and and knew what 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 such a, a hot pot for talent is over here. So, being able to you know set something up that's going to be meaningful for the club in the future is you know pretty cool. It's sort of like fan pub chat as well, Benny. We always talk about like, you know, where are all of our junior talent? And mm-hmm. we see you know the Joey Manners of the world and everyone else. We go, why? How did we miss these guys? So when you get a guy or someone in the building who is solely focused on pathways as fans, that's what sort of pumps us up, eh? Oh, yeah, it's exciting. And I think people don't realise just how hard it is to keep all the oh, talent here, you can't. obviously. You know, <laughs> yeah. we're the one club. There's so many big franchises over in Aussie that are trying to poach them. But, mm. yeah, it is exciting knowing that, that there's a structure in place and we're going to do our best. Tell us a little bit then, Cappy, about the day-to-day, mate. So how much of your time, I suppose, is spent um, recruiting for, like, our NRL side? Is that part of what sort of the role encompasses as well versus yeah. how much are you down there sitting on the hill at, you know, New Lynn trying to find the next uh, superstar 16-year-old? What's kind of the balance in that? Because yeah, it seems look, it's, the title's vague, so yeah, 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 that's why well, I'm asking. Well, they're two completely separate sort of, yes. um, you know, jobs. So, you know, I've got to balance my t- time between the two. Um, sometimes, you know, the NRL stuff takes precedence and next minute I'm, I'm sort of my work is driven towards that, whether we need a player or something happens. Mm. Um, at the moment, most of my time is spent on the pathways. You know, our our NRL squad's, you know, pretty locked in. Yeah. Um, you know, there's a bit of movement for us, but, you know, that's, you know, and, and it's it's a bit of a slow burn recruitment, to be honest with you, because, you know, when you go to identify a player, sometimes that's cut down very quickly or sometimes the opportunity, um, you know, can go further. But, you know, there's always a process. And so, um, but the pathways is probably what, takes up a lot of my time, particularly, you know, with the addition of these new teams next year. Um, you know, we're going to find venues, mm. um, fields for these kids to, to be able to train on. And um, so that's, you know, it's quite a bit of work at the moment. As Kiwis and, and Aussies as well, we love winners. Do you find that with the club's success at the moment, it's easier to have conversations with be it professional players and agents or parents and kids about joining the Warriors pathway and maybe getting some rugby boys to come across, things like that? Yeah, there's there's no doubt the momentum of the team at the moment helps mm. this. Yeah. Um, you know, people, players generally want to go to a successful environment and if mm. they see it succeeding or, you know, there's an energy around, they, that's what they get gravitate towards. Um, so there's no doubt that that that, that helps our, our space and uh, there's certainly um, a lot of excitement. So it's good. You mentioned that the 
like the different ways that can go. It can either get shut down immediately or it's a slow burn. I'm fascinated by the process. So if mm. talk us through, Cappy. Say that there's a player who you've identified, the Warriors, let's think in our round now, can use this guy. Is that a conversation where you go to, um, and he's free to negotiate, whatever that may be, do you go direct to player, do you go direct to agent, do you go direct to club, does it vary? Like, What's kind of the process and then how do we get from initial consultation chats with maybe coaches or whatever into someone inking a contract? What is it, how does it look? Oh, look, sometimes it can be quick as well. Like, yeah, but, you we know, want him, he wants to come here, bang. Yeah. That's it. Someone, you know, the motivation of both parties is good and the, and obviously the money yeah. is mm. the, bit, the bit as well and and. That sometimes can all connect and bang, it happens quickly. Yeah. Um, but, you know, probably at that top end, you know, the, the marquee sort of players, you know, if you want to try to, it's a to process, find someone, yeah. it's a process. Like, you know, they've got to want to come here. We actually want players that want to be a warrior and, mm. and really immerse themselves into the team and the culture and the country. Mm. So um, not everyone's like that. No, not everyone wants to do that. So it kind of starts with those conversations first. Um, do they fit in our squad? Yeah. You know, do they want to come here? And then it's a, you know, then it's a process after that. But, you know, sometimes the process can last six months. Um, other times it's two days. I wonder as well, Benny, like, oh, Cappy, how much of that is the focus is also on the person? Because I know we always, or we've been, how many weeks have we been sitting here going, Father Warriors just looks like such a fun team to be a part of now. Everyone's like, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Attitude wise. There may be a superstar on the horizon or some gun player. How much of that balances, but is he the right bloke for us? Because I know that that's anyone, well, not anyone, a lot of people can identify raw talent, but finding, like you mentioned, that fit, um, that's obviously just come with experience and yeah. that's why you got the fancy title, I suppose. <laughs> yeah, look, it's an important dynamic. Yeah. You know, you, you've got to have good people. Yeah. Uh, most people are inherently good. Yeah. Most people and, footy are good, you find. Yeah. There's, yeah. There's, you know, not everyone, but. And, and, but you've got to remember, none of these guys are choir boys either. You yeah. Know, there's, these guys are. They're, they're, <laughs> they're risk takers. They, yeah. they want to, they go out there on the field because they. It goes with the job, mm, eh? It does. Yeah. So, um, and we don't want choir boys. We want people that are. You know, they, they can have a few rough edges because mm. that's actually makes them what, you know, who they are. So Love that. But certainly they've got to have an inherent goodness and probably the biggest thing is they've got to be team first people, you know, people that when it comes down to the crunch that they're always going to put the team above themselves. So um, that's probably probably the, the biggest attribute you can have as a player. Our, um, one of our favourite sons of this team, as soon as you said team first, all those attributes, Chance Nickel Klukstar, who's come to the club this year, is a guy that probably, I know you've had a relationship with previously, but he kind of is the perfect example of that, isn't he? A guy he who just he, bleeds it. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. And, you know, and that's why people love him. You know, he every week he puts in his best effort and, you know, he is a team first player and, you know, you can see what he's contributing at the moment for the team. Dif biggest challenges with the role, Cappy. So I know you're probably not, you know, you're still kind of working your way through it and the club is still trying to work its way through this pathways thing, whether it's the junior teams coming in and all that. But what what have you found has been your biggest challenge with the role so far? Because luring talent to New Zealand, as we know, has never been super easy for this club historically anyway, mm. Benny. But what has been your biggest challenge in the role so far? Um, probably, I mean... It's 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 an expected challenge to be honest with you, but it's still challenging in the fluidity fluidity of of mm. of recruitment. Like you can have a plan, but none of those things come to fruition. Yeah. So you've got to have a plan B, C, and D, and you know you just got to be able to to move, and it moves all the time. That's what rugby league. But I've I've got experience in in the game now, and I so I kind of I'm aware of that. Mm. So, but that's still a challenge. I like to get all my ducks in a row. Um, but it doesn't quite often work like that. <laughs> That's probably where the competitor in you comes out as well because you, yeah. you were a player, you've yeah. been a very successful coach. I mean, you've got to kind of have a bit of that in you in your role, don't you? You do, you do. Yeah. You've got to have a passion for it. Mm. There's no doubt about it. And uh, I think that's probably the great thing about this club at the moment. We've got an owner who's passionate about it and all the people around are passionate. And you've got to, you've got to bring something to the organisation. Is there that still – there's going to be a 1,000 fan questions like it, but I might as well just get it out there now. Is, do you still have that desire to coach? Is coaching still something that – I know you're very – obviously you're all in on this role now. Does that desire to coach still burn at all in you? Um, is it something that you're still interested in, enjoy, or think about? <laughs> Not at the moment, no. to be honest with you. I, in in terms of like NRL coaching and yeah. all that, um, I love coaching. You know, it's a, you know, it's something I've always enjoyed. Um, I guess I guess I get to do it a little differently now. Like part of my pathways role is to um, 
provide support for player development and whatnot. And part of that is to develop coaches. Oh, cool. So coaching coaches is probably where I'm going to go mm. now, um, as opposed to the actual coaching of the players. Mm. So, yeah, look, it's it is um, yeah something I'm very passionate about coaching, but. You know, that sort of part of my life at the moment, I'm putting on the back burner. Mm-hmm. Maybe down the track, I'll want to go back there. But at the moment, I'm enjoying the role too much. Can we talk a little bit about this pack announcement then? Because for anyone who might have missed it, um, the Pacific Aotearoa Collective yep. um, had their exhibition game against our 17s. Uh, the curtain raiser out here on Saturday. Benny and I were down there. Yeah. It was a heck of a game. Good so footy. Some big shots in there. They weren't small boys. <laughs> <Jeez>. um, <laughs> there were yeah, some athletes none of these guys are some I'm glad I was days. watching. Yeah. Yeah. I'm glad I was watching. There were some athletes out there, mate. Um, talk to us a little bit about what that kind of encompasses for anyone who might have missed the announcement itself or what um, our partnership with PAC kind of looks like from a Warriors perspective, Cap. Yeah, look, obviously there's a huge thirst for the international game now mm. with the success of the World Cup last mm. year. And the reason it's successful is for the first time you kind of can't pick who's going to win. That's the most important thing about sport is you, the unknown. Mm. Like if, if you know with the result, it kind of gets boring. So I think with the international game and, and the way it's been moving, I think, and, and the way that players are now, um, you know, picking their country of origin or their birth yes. uh, country as opposed to, the one that's got the best profile. Like mm-hmm. I think it's great that people or players can pick that, pick their team that they want to, and and that those emerging nations are really coming. Tonga and Samoa, they you know they're coming good, um, and we've got competition. So it kind of started off on that. Um, you know, we've got to invest in the community, um, mm-hmm. and you know that the, they run some pretty cool tournaments. The the pack group, they all run their own individual nation tournaments, but. The, the pack tournament is a collection of that and, um, you know, we want to tap into that. So, you know, it's pretty cool. Yeah, that, at that event on um, on Friday night, it was the first time I really become properly aware of, of of the tournaments they run, but they're proper – it's a well-oiled machine. There's yeah. the, That's a full organised event and once you start to kind of understand the investment that they're already putting in that space and when you come along and, you know, you add the Warriors sort of weight behind that, I, I dare say it's it can only be good for the development of rugby league in this country, right, let alone – the island nations, which are already on the come up. It's going to be right. good for the Warriors. Yeah, the, the biggest challenge over here in terms of rugby league is getting elite um, competition, yes. I, I guess. Um, so, you know, the pack tournaments are an elite age competition. Um, obviously, now that we're bringing in the new teams, the Harold Matthews and the Jersey flag next year, you know, there's going to be a very clear pathway for kids to come through our system, you know, and they can these tournaments act as a great sort of trial match and and – you know, it allows kids to really showcase their skills and we'll be at those tournaments all the time. Sick. And, um, you know, that's going to give us a good look at them and then, you know, the opportunity is then to come to the Warriors. Mm. Before your sort of uh, Warriors journey, Cappy, you were a pretty handy first grader in your day, mate. Uh, we had some photos that went up uh, on the Warriors socials, headgear and all, socks down. Um, look, there was a bit of – the shorts were a little bit baggy on you, mate. You weren't the biggest bloke, but you, you, you went all right. Yeah, it went hard, it went hard. <laughs> Jerseys were a lot bigger back <laughs> Yeah, there we go. <laughs> there we slim go. fit now. It was an equipment. It's pre-sport thing. science days, yeah, wasn't it, mate? Yeah, you would have been a machine back in the day <laughs> if you play now. Um, talk us through your sort of football journey, Cappy, because um, it's, it's one that maybe, you know, people haven't heard you kind of delve into in a long time. But take us all the way back, mate. Um, Andrew McFadden, the footballer, where'd your journey start? Oh, I'm really going to have to go back to the memory now. Um, look, I, I was a Canberra boy. I grew yeah. up in Canberra. Um, I went through their junior system, so I, I kind of know this Harold yeah. Matthews SG ball That's interesting, Jersey yeah. flag pathway system. That's the system I came through. Um, you know, I was fortunate enough to um, be around Canberra when the gl- in the glory days, mm, yeah. and and I was what fortunate. was that like in terms of just being in that environment? Oh, it was it was the city was just. Yeah, unbelievable. I can actually see a lot of similarities. I, I know that this city will go off if, yeah. if we have that success, and um, and certainly Canberra did back then. Um, you know the the great players of that generation. I tapped into the back of it. You know, I, I sort of made my debut in 1997, and you know, Ricky Stewart, Bradley Clyde, Laurie Daly, Melman Ingle was my first coach. <laughs> not bad. <laughs> not bad. Not bad. Yeah, it, was, it was a bit surreal to be, to be yeah. honest with you. I grew up. Watching these guys, it's still on, surreal when you say it now. Yeah. <laughs> on the hill, yeah. and I was, and I'm sitting next minute. I'm training with them and tackling them and and all that sort of stuff. So it was, it's kind of weird, um, but yeah. Look, it was a great, um, you know, it was a great time in my life. You know, playing playing NRL is pretty cool and um, went very fast, went yeah. hugely fast. Yeah. And um, but yeah, 
lots of good memories. What were kind of some of those, do you have any moments that stand out? Obviously, a lot of players say their debut, which I'm sure was special, but are there any moments in particular which you look back on even today and go, fuck, that was pretty, that was pretty special? <laughs> I've actually got a really cool moment. Um, it's not playing, but it was a, it was a, and actually it was, it was around, um, do, do you remember the World Club Challenge? Yeah. Yes. So yeah. it was where, you know, the competition stopped, the normal NRL competition would stop, and then we'd have this three week tournament where half the NRL teams would go over to, England and half the England teams would come here and you'd play three weeks. Mm-hmm. Anyway, I managed to – there was a 21-man squad. I was number 21. I snuck <laughs> onto the back of the plane. They all Beauty. they all sat up in first class and yeah. I was down in and cargo right down the back, <laughs> the back of the plane. And um, anyway, we went over and we got we got beaten in the first game by London Broncos. Like we led 18-0 and we got beat and I didn't, get, didn't even get on. But that tournament was set up as such as if an NRL team got beat by the – an English team, you were pretty much gone. You're out of the comp. So mm. we're out, out of it in round one. So as it was a bit old school back then, yeah. we wanted, we went on and, and had a bit of a drink after yeah. the after the game. But at the time, the Australian cricket team were playing the fourth test at Headingley for the Ashes. Oh. And, um, Stars aligning. <laughs> yeah, and, and it was the fourth day. And yeah. like they all Australia had to do was bowl them out. Mm. And uh, so we got dressed up in, you know, fancy – clothes and wigs and stuff like that and we end up going to the cricket and as it turns out they they um they bowled England out by lunchtime and next minute we're in the in the sheds with the Australian c- cricket team <laughs> this on. is this is the again surreal moment this yeah. is the Australian cricket team when they were at their peak yeah. this is Warren you know Gilchrist you know the two oh, war brothers some characters and some characters legends. ponting yeah. all these guys and there I am with a wig on, I've got all these photos at home. Yeah. I've got this orange wig on, this pink frilly sort of dress, and there I am. You know, I got my arm around jersey number twenty one. Yeah. Yeah. And I was, you know, I'm, it, it is surreal. Like that. I was, I've got this great photo at home with me and Shane Warne giving the bird. So um, that's the best. Yeah, yeah, that's a pool room. Yeah, it, for sure. it, it, it was man cave yeah. blowed up on the wall. Yeah, oh, that's so that, in terms of playing, I had yeah, yeah. lots of good moments, but. Um, yeah, just playing with those guys like Laurie Daly and that, that was pretty cool. That's kind of a lot of a lot of people who we've had on. Monty was another one. He had all these amazing football memories and it kind of took him three or four stories until he got to one that was actually on the field. He mm. just spoke more about just kind of being around those great yeah, sides. Locker room stuff. Locker always. room stuff. Yeah. And he was around guys like Ali Lalatiti and similar to you around guys that he looked up to. And then all of a sudden you're out there playing with them. It's it's pretty cool. Yeah, well, they're just they're just blokes at the mm. end of the day. They're humans mm. and like you, you, you build them up but then you go and meet them and they just they have the same normal conversation. Or you tackle them and you go, oh. that's right. not too bad. <laughs> not too bad, yeah. Yeah, yeah. so um, pretty cool. I did, like, when I was playing, I do remember a couple of moments, particularly in first grade, like I, I took over from Ricky Stewart. I don't know if you remember Ricky Stewart as a player. He was all right. Yeah. yeah. He went Andy. all right. Andy. But he used to have, a, like, a, a pass. He, he put on a dime, mm. 30 metres. He'd yeah. just go straight across the field. And Laurie Daly obviously sat out Ricky, outside Ricky Stewart for, you know, a decade. Mm. And uh, then I came in to play. <laughs> I still couldn't pass left or right. So, like, he's standing a long way from me, and I, Come he just, you think like, you the amount it? of times he would just stare at me yeah. because the bad passes that I used to get gave him. Um, yeah, it was, it was, uh, yeah, it was uh, a tough act to follow, Ricky Stewart. That's for sure. Stick still got it. Sometimes you just see him in warm up. He's tossing yeah. the ball up in the air and he just snaps the wrist. Well, in the coach's box, eh? You in can see he's like, I would have yeah. thrown that. He still that. puts up a mean talk. talk yeah, yeah, he's still got it. Yeah. yeah. See, before before Matty Burton, mate, there was Ricky Stewart. Yeah, People correct. forget. Um, was it always your desire to coach, Cappy? Obviously, you had a, a, an amazing playing career and like you said, played with some incredible guys. Um, at what stage in your career or maybe from the start, did you always think coaching was something you'd want to do one day? Or did you uh, just want to be in football? Is that what you knew? Yeah, look, I, I kind of retired quite early um, through injuries and whatnot. But um, I people used to tell me that I should be a coach one day. It's mm. kind of like, you, you've done anything with Blake Green? Blake Green yes. like he's a footy mm. head. Like mm. I was kind of like that. And uh, people used to say, you should be a coach. And so when I retired, I went straight into it and said, right, I'm going to give this a go. And yeah, loved it. What was the first role? Coaching role? Uh, co- coached the Jersey flag team in Canberra oh, wow. part-time. So I, I used to work at a, a betting agency by night and um, on the phones. Yeah. And then I was, uh, yeah, um, training during the day. and any, so Put the wages back through, eh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> any, um, <laughs> any players from those Jersey flag days, any names that sort of ended um, up kicking on in those early uh, days? Yeah, I had a couple. Michael Dobson. Do you remember Michael Dobson? No. He played first grade. 
Um, William Zillman. Oh, Zillman. yeah, zip, zip. Yeah. Yeah, so there's a few of them there. Um, yeah, I, the, the second year I came back to Canberra, so I, I coached in Canberra uh, for a couple of years mm. in 2005 and 2006. Then I went overseas to France and coached mm. the great Stacey Jones over mm. there for a couple of years. That would have been fun. Um, <laughs> again, a surreal moment when yeah. you're you're younger than one of your idols. And, yeah. and you're coaching <laughs> yeah, that's him, so. crazy. <laughs> and then uh, came back to Canberra and I, I, I actually coached a really red hot team and that's when Josh Dugan, mm. they were like early Toyota Cup sort of days. Yep, yeah. Yep, yep. They were special. I think back as well, Bodes is nodding his head because that was the years when the Warriors and Canberra and I think Brisbane was another yeah, very Brisbane. strong team. Yeah. But there's that a was, bit of a rivalry there. Yeah, right? there was. I think did, did Canberra win the first Toyota Cup? Yeah, or? they won the original the, the inaugural one yeah. in two thousand eight. And then we won the following year. Yep. Yeah, yeah. No, yep. they were so special I, teams. So I remember yeah, coaching in Canberra when the Kevin Locks and the Sean Johnsons yes. and Benny and all that sort of stuff were yeah. all coming through. So, yeah, pretty pretty good group of players. Was um, let's jump forward then. How did the uh, Warriors come onto your radar, and how did you end up initially sort of landing yourself here, Cap? Um, well, I was I was ready for a change. I'd I'd been coaching in Canberra for four years. Mm. Um, I'd had Matthew Elliott as a coach. So Matthew Elliott had just been announced as a coach here. I'd had him as a coach before, so I already had a relationship with him, and there was an opportunity to come over and. Um, yeah, like um, I guess I had a great time in France and just seeing a new culture, new country. It was it was the right time for me and my family, and so we I had a two year old and a five month old, and we wow. we made a snap decision. It was all done in sort of two or three weeks, and and we were over here. So, like you said, if both parties are keen, it's not that hard. <laughs> it's not. That's right. It's, uh, both parties yeah. are motivated. Yeah, yeah. So we did that, and uh, yeah, it was. I had a wonderful six years. 2014, obviously, you were thrust into the, the top job here, which is kind of what probably a lot of fans remember Andrew mm. McFadden as, as being the Warriors head coach. Um, what do you remember kind of about how all that went down, Cap? Because obviously you had a relationship with Matty Elliott. And what do you remember? Do you remember that period vividly? Or was it all a bit of a blur? Or, I mean, how was that kind of that year specifically, 2014? Yeah, it was no, a, it was, it was an remember, interesting one. I remember that initial. Um, you know, that change over very well. I remember I was I was at the Novotel in in um Sydney there, just mm-hmm. near the airport, and Matthew came in came in and said, I'm gone. I said, What do you mean you're gone? Where are you going? <laughs> Can and he said, No, no, I'm <laughs> yeah. gone. I went, Wow. And it just it all went from there and you know, I had to come back to the club and they told me I was going to be interim coach and it was a sort of whirlwind week and then it was all the press and I kind of didn't really have time to prepare myself for it. It's yeah. just bang, it's happened. And I had no idea it was coming. It's crazy. Like, because as a fan outside looking in, you always just assume that people know these things yeah, are going yeah, oh, on. Writing's on the wall. Yeah. He's, yeah. Cappy's ready to go. Like it's, yeah. but it's weird. Like that you find out literally as we find out sometimes. That, yeah. That's exactly Wild. how it happened. And, um, yeah, it was so those, those early games, it was just like, I was just trying to keep my head above water to be honest with you. Mm. And, um, yeah, look, obviously head coaching, is not that easy to get. I didn't have a huge profile then. Like I'm not, I'm not re- really one to self-promote or, or mm. push it out there. So it's kind of like, do you want to take the job? Mm. I went, well, I'm going to give it a crack. So, yeah, it was great. You, 2014, you were thrust into the top job, obviously. Your first win as a head coach. Do you remember it very well? I remember it. You know, uh, it's, it's coinciding with the it's game. It's coincided, yeah, mate. It's eh? a historical first win one. was yeah. uh, Anzac Day in Melbourne. It was actually the only the second time the Warriors have ever beaten uh, Melbourne in Melbourne on Anzac Day and the last time. What do you remember about that game, mate? Because like you mentioned, the first – Few days, hours, weeks. I can imagine your phone's blowing up. You're just trying to, like you said, keep your head above water. Yeah. All of a sudden, you go to Melbourne for Anzac Day. There's even more theatre and more media and <laughs> a whole lot of noise, and you get the win. What do you remember about that game, mate? Oh, look, I don't remember too much <laughs> other than the win. To be honest with yeah. you, um, yeah. Look, it was it was obviously I was still yeah, deep in it and just trying to keep that head above water. But but um, I do remember the build up to the game and how well they do it yeah. in, in Melbourne, mm. you know, and the, the, you know, it's really classy what they do there. And, you know, it's such a great atmosphere and, you know, a lot of respect there. And, um, yeah, but I do remember the game. <laughs> I remember specifically a David Fusatua, yeah. you know, whole body over the sideline. <laughs> he did that a few times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah the but that was mark. almost like, I was talking to someone the other day and they reckon that maybe that was the first one where he's kind of, He's going, oh, I can. He took it to another level. I can launch from here. I can launch from here, and I'm just going to just put the ball in that bottom yeah. corner. So I remember, you know, Sean come up with a couple of key moments that game, and, yeah, we got over the line. It was it was a nice one. He scored the try, didn't he? Sean, yeah, Sean yeah. scored kind of the ceiling. I think, well, mm. we've only won twice, and Sean's been a, probably a big part of both of those games. So, 
You never know, Benny. You never know. You're feeling good, good about feeling. this, yeah. Good feeling. Um, putting your coach's hat on just for the last second here, Cappy, before we get to some fan questions. Um, this club, this clash sort of specifically, were you to be talking to the boys? Because we spoke to Jazz yesterday and he kind of spoke about how occasionally with these, that is such a big occasion, the Anzac game, he kind of plays it in his head before out before he gets out there. What would kind of your message be to the boys around, yes, enjoy it, and I'm sure, you know, like you said, it is a special occasion, but how do you then go, all right, mm. shift it back to neutral, we got a game of footy here to play? Because that can be a – I can imagine as a coach that would be the hard balancing act that Webby's going to have to work through this week. Yeah, it's a, it's a really good question actually because mm. you can overplay – the answer, the, the, the occasion will take care of itself, to be mm. honest with you. The atmosphere will build regardless. So you don't actually, don't, as a coach, and I've made the mistake of overdoing it, mm. trying to use the, the the Anzac occasion as motivation. To get a bit extra. To get yeah. a bit extra, but you actually don't need to because it's already, you know, people understand. Mm. And, and the occasion takes care of itself. So it's probably more about being relaxed this week and just enjoying the experience. You know, that would be my advice is – don't overplay it. Like it's 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 an unbelievable unbelievable atmosphere, and you know enjoy the experience. You know, mm. hearing the last post, you know pre-game, it's yeah, it's special. It's eh? got its own moment, mm. and just enjoy it. Enjoy that moment and 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 the and the part you play in that game, and you know try to keep relaxed. You don't have to oversell it. Yeah, and Melbourne do it. Melbourne are a very good side. Craig's a very good coach. They'll be doing exactly that. So I think yeah. that's probably good and advice. I think that's probably where you know coaches have gone wrong. I certainly did. I'm, I was on the – I did win my first game there and yeah. that was, you know, just probably by chance, to be honest <laughs> with you, because I, I copped a couple of floggings there too. So, um, you know, it's a it's a hard game to win. Yeah. All right, Benny, fan questions time, mate. we got got 1,000, so let's start ripping through them. Cappy? Yeah, well, um, we just had the SJ yeah. taught there, so let's kick it off there. A few people have asked, Sean, 2014 to 2016 compared to now, what kind of similarities and differences do you see in his game from when you were at the helm compared to modern-day SJ? He's playing as good as he's ever played right now. Mm. Um, in that 2015, 14, 15 year, particularly 15 before he broke his leg, Mm. Um, he was doing some crazy things. Like he was just unstoppable. Mm. Um, he's different now. Um, he probably doesn't have that top end like he used to, but he's managing a game and taking a game on better than he's ever done it. So, you know, he's, he's certainly in some rare form at the moment. Who do you kind of liken that to, Cappy? Because a lot of the commentary was sort of around how Benji transitioned. I know it's, a, it's an easy comparison mm. to make, obviously, because they were both so electric, but is there another player that kind of you saw – who maybe started their career with all of that zip and zigging and f- flair and kind of worked into this period? Because, I mean, it, it seems pretty rarefied air at this point. Yeah, I think I think most ball players, particularly the ones that have just got electric footwork and yeah. speed, you know, eventually it catches up with them when they get old, but what takes over is their game knowledge. Mm. The one who probably reinvented himself right at the end was Brad Fittler. Yeah, right. So Brad Fittler was obviously an unbelievable individual back in his early days, started as a centre and then went into 5'8". But then, I don't know if you remember, but he was um, you know, he was voted the most overrated player for a number of years. Mm. No, and I the don't know well. Crazy. Hey. Great. Yeah. But then he just completely reinvented himself and ended up winning, you know, winning the competitions with the Roosters at the end. But, you know, he you have to you have to evolve. Sean's game knowledge is you know, second to none, and that's he. He knows exactly what's he what he's doing, and 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 in fairness, Andrew Webster's providing a plan yeah. that mm. suits him, mm. and they've got the clarity, and that's why you're seeing, you know, they look really well organised, um, you know, and they don't get flustered because you know they know what they they need to do out there. Next one's from Pat, and he says, "How did you get the nickname Cappy?" Boring story, very boring. <laughs> and I've had to tell this many times. <laughs> I can imagine. And you guys are too young to probably even remember, but. Back in the day, there used to be, a, you know, back when we used to read newspapers. Yeah, I remember. For our news. Um, I used to write for a couple, mate. I yeah, remember. Yeah, true, right. true. Anyway, there was a there was a cartoon character in the newspaper, you know, the cartoons at the back of the yeah. paper. Andy Cap, he was a, you know, darts player. Used to wear his cap like this. And, <laughs> and I used to wear a hat all the time because I used to, I don't know if you're, well, I don't have any hair now, but my hair used to be horrible. Yeah. So. I used to wear my hat down like that, and Craig Bellamy gave me the nickname, actually. Oh, that's a nice story. Then yeah. It's coming from Craig the big Bellamy. fella. That's all right. So we are playing cards on my first away trip yeah. with Canberra, um, and uh, we are playing Euchre, and and he said, you look like Andy Cap. <laughs> and then next minute, Brett Mullins and Brett Hetherington said, Cappy, that's your nickname. <laughs> 
and it's travelled with me everywhere. Yeah? <laughs> that was that was a good story. That's a good I story. I don't, yeah. even, I don't even introduce myself as Andrew anymore. I no. just say Cappy. I introduced you downstairs. Someone said, "Oh, you got on the podcast today." I said, "Oh, Andrew's coming up," and they all went like that. <laughs> I said, "Oh, Cappy, they have to stay." So that's a good story. I like that. A few questions. Uh, what does it take to become an NRL player, and and what are you looking for in young players these days? What kind of attributes? Probably come from a. 16 year old oh there was a handful of them I think (laughs) a few parents as well hopefully looking to push their kids look as a as a player if you want to rise up you've got to stand out you've got and you've got to figure out what you stand out for like Mm. you can stand out for a number of things you can be stand out because you're six foot twelve six foot eleven I should say (laughs) seven foot foot, yeah anyway yeah um (laughs) you know you can be you can be tall you can be big but you've got to and have a big carry but that might be what you stand out for, but if you're small, what are you going to stand out for? You know, you could be a really good tackler. You could have unbelievable skill, footwork. You've got to stand out. You've got to be able to be noticed. That's mm. how you. That's how you rise up the ranks. You know, not everyone can do it, but you mm. know, that's that's how we we identify people. Was it a surreal moment for you coming back to Mount Smart? Did you ever think you'd be back at the club? I have them all the time. I have these nostalgic moments where I go, I can't believe I'm I'm here again. Mm. Like I have very fond memories and. I watched the the boys captains run the other day before um the Cowboys game and I was just walking around going I can't believe I'm here again so it's uh pretty cool but yeah. yeah. Is there plans for a Warriors Academy building or a center of excellence in the future? Uh we would love one yeah mm. that'd be ideal. Seems um, like that's kind of the buzzword at the moment right every club's building a center of excellence and all this, you know, fancy, but like if you are investing in pathways, it, it kind of makes sense, yep. I suppose, to have, well, like you said, somewhere yep. for the mm. juniors to play, whether it's fields or facilities, yeah, probably that's, something needs to be put in place. That's at the centre of our sort yeah. of work. Mm. Whether Nothing. you build something from scratch or you mm. adopt somewhere else, it's kind of, you need somewhere to go, right? Yeah, that's right. And it's 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 a bit of a challenge, but mm. yeah, that's certainly what we're aiming for. I think long term, you know, we need, you know, a high performance facility that's going to cater for everything. Yeah, sick. Are we still chasing a marquee prop signing? That was from Mo. Yeah, there's, there was a lot of people just straight up asking, "Who are you signing?" Yeah, yeah, yeah. or when are we getting Joey? Ah, uh, look, you know, there's there's definitely some space um, to to get some marquee signings, and 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 probably a marquee forward mm. is is one of those. Um, but we're just working through all that at the moment. I know that's probably not going to satisfy those coaches. The speak there, mate. You just went right is, back into type. I know. I know. <laughs> yeah. I don't like to give too much away, to be honest with you, but. Um, yeah, there's certainly some some nice nice things on the horizon. I think some people will get some some um, yeah. There'll be something coming out pretty soon that will be yeah. They'll they'll enjoy. Good. And proudest moment of your career, either in coaching or playing. Do you have one? Proudest moment's a tough one. Uh, I think my proudest moment is I'm just still working in rugby mm-hmm. league. To That's be cool. With you. Like I just I love it, and it's not everyone can do it. I don't take it for granted at all. Like I'm, I feel very lucky, um, and I just I think I'm still here. Mm. Like, yeah, so the, that's probably my proudest moment. That's awesome. And then the final one was around Ricky Stewart because obviously you've had a bit to do with him. People were just asking if I've he's, got about nine if he's the same type, of, same type of character we see on our TV screens. 100% he is. Yeah, yeah right. He, what you see is what you get. Like he's like that all the time. Mm. He wears his heart on his sleeve, but he is a very, very caring person. So and that's why he's and very competitive. He's probably I am very competitive, but he's got me covered well <laughs> and truly. Like when he loses, he sulks. Mm. When he wins, he's the greatest winner you've ever met. <laughs> um, but he's he's probably overriding ca- character trait is that he he's very caring. So um, yeah, no, he's a great person to work for. That's awesome. All right, well, look, is that what we got on fan yeah, questions? Yeah, yeah, we can wrap There's up a there. Thousand there, but we'll we'll wrap you up. We'll get you out of here, mate, because <laughs> right, you got some players to sign. So, Cappy, <laughs> mate, we really appreciate you coming in, and um, just as fans, Ben and I are extremely mm. excited. Not only what you're doing here at the club with Pack and all the other partnerships, but just the idea that there is a someone at the helm and an investment in pathways in New Zealand rugby league is pretty fucking exciting for us, bro. So, thanks, thanks for coming guys. on, mate. Enjoyed this. Appreciate Thank it. You. Anytime, Cappy. Come Good back on, anytime. <laughs> thanks, Ben. Yeah, announce some big signings on here. Yeah. 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 Oh. We've got a one-take exclusive. Yeah. <laughs>